All right, last time we had a look at how to make a mask so that you can sort of spin the camera around 360 degrees off the green screen and you don't actually see anything, you just see the world more. And someone brought up the question of, you know, what if I want something in front of the character there? So if I grab, for example, a cube and I just put it in here, and I move it into a position that would very obviously be, I guess, in front of my little giraffe here, and then put it up, you'll see that the giraffe is still behind it, which is kind of annoying. But if I go into the depth stencil for this cube and hit render and keep it at zero, so remember one is for our mask for our garbage mat. If I set it back to zero, then it goes in front of them. So let me just lower this a bit. There he is, little giraffe. So if we go into our ultimate settings, what we will find if I go into inputs, garbage mat, is you can see here what is happening, and I can turn off the depth stencil, is this cube is actually being rendered as white because it's set to zero, same as the background. And so what we're doing is we're actually cutting into our mask there, which just shows the background. Now the cool thing about this, and let me switch this back to there, is it's 3D based, because the cube that's generating the mask around the giraffe is a cube in 3D space. This cube is in 3D space, so if I move this one back, eventually it will pop out the other side. Forward, back, forward, back, forward, back forward, back. Now, this is okay for an object or two, but what if I wanted a home among the gum trees with a sheep or two and a kangaroo and a clothesline out the back? All right, so here I have a lovely grassy landscape, not quite a home among the gum trees, but close enough. Now, the problem is these are all an instance fall ejector. I can't click you know, on these and just type depth stencil like so, and nothing comes up. Type stencil, no. There is, however, a way we can modify our post-process material instead. And it's actually quite simple. So I'm currently using the custom stencil mask here. I'm gonna plug that just into the emissive color so we can see what's happening. And as you can see, we've just got our cube and a black background. However, I'm going to duplicate this, is I'm gonna switch this one at the top to the scene depth, like so, and save. And then I'll give it a minute, and we'll start to get this depth map. Pretty straightforward. This second one, I'm gonna to switch to the custom depth. So the stencil renders a value of zero to 255. Uh, we were just using one. But if I go to custom depth instead, when we enable the stencil, you notice it actually is called custom depth. And so what that means is it's still just a depth mask, you know, further away is a different color to close to the camera, but of our, um, just our single object, our cube. So what I can actually do is I can simply subtract one from the other and plug that in. And what we'll get is, as you can see here, a mask with, or a mask in 3D space in amongst the rest of the depth mask. Now this one starts to go silly bright, stupidly bright, so I'm just gonna use a saturate node. If you don't know what a saturate is, it is a basically a zero to one clamp that is free on modern graphics hardware. It doesn't take any time to process. Um, so we'll clamp it like that. And now if I let it load up, you can see we now have our depth mask with plants in front of it. So if I go ahead and just plug this back into opacity and plug the post process into the emission and save, ta-da. Very, very simple. So, and it still is 3D based, so I can move it back and forward through the scene and we'll get more or less plants in front of our giraffe. If I move it back real far, we should get basically all of them. 
or if I pull it really close, then we'll get basically no plants occluding like so. Back, let's put it back. And this still works with all our camera tracking. So if I just grab my camera controls here, I can, uh, oh, my delay is way off. Let me try and fix that a bit. But yeah, this still works with all our camera tracking stuff. I can zoom right in like so. Uh, I'd say up and close, it might get a bit funky. Like so. As I zoom out a bit. But yeah, that's how we can sort of set up an automatic occlusion so that we don't need to enable depth stencil on everything. Thank you guys for watching. This is my last video in Denver. I ship out to uh, the National Association of Broadcasters, NAB, in Vegas tomorrow.